DJI just released three new products, Ronin RS3, Ronin RS3 Pro and DJI Transmission. So let's check out what you can really squeeze out of this gear and why the Pro name changed so many things. Stop that. First, a quick explanation. DJI Transmitter is a completely new product, RS3 is the next generation of RSC2 and RS3 Pro is the next version of RS2. I tell you this because names and design of these new gimbals can be a bit confusing. Apart from the size, both gimbals are very similar not only to each other but also to the RS2. But more than that, both new gimbals have some identical improvements that I would like to start with before we go into more detail about each model. One of the best news is the fact that for the first time in history, new models are almost completely compatible with the accessories of previous models. From now on, all RS series gimbals have the exact same mount design that we know from the RS2, which means that the whole extra gear is still completely usable and fit not only to the new RS3 Pro, but some of them also to the RS3. So from now on, this is the biggest, greatest and most advanced ecosystem you can imagine. DJI, on behalf of all the filmmakers of the world, thank you. Now, one of the completely new features that the new RS series gimbals get is automatic motor lock. And here I must admit that I was quite skeptical about it because I thought that it may be cool but it is actually unnecessary because I have no problem locking each axis manually. But everything changed when I finally tried it. This is just brilliant, you can choose which type of lock you want to activate. For me, recenter lock is my favorite because that's the position I use to transport my Ronin and it is also a great option when I change batteries or lens. This is one of those things that you don't realize you need it until you try it. Another new feature is a bigger display. For sure this will be more useful not only for working with a Ronin image transmitter but also navigating in the menu is much easier. Also, next to the display, you will find a new mode switch, which is a nice option for those who use a lot of different operating modes. Another identical improvement is a Bluetooth model that allows you to communicate wirelessly with the camera. You no longer need to connect the camera to the USB-C cable as in RS2. Of course, it was not a big problem, but for example, if you use a Blackmagic camera and you record to a hard drive and not to CFAS card, then USB-C port in the camera was already in use. Besides, it is good news for all who prefer a clean installation without cables. The last major improvement is the new stabilization algorithm, which is 20% better. I don't know what is the difference in stabilization between the RS3 and RS2 because I have never had the previous model, but I can definitely tell you about the improvements over the Big Brother because I have tested the RS2 in every possible way. So let's find out why the Liter Pro logo changed so many things. And I guess it's time to stop calling it a gimbal. I would say more like a professional remote camera stabilizer. The new Ronin RS3 is bigger than RS2 but has the same payload. It's not a huge difference because basically each arm is about 2 cm bigger but it changed a lot. And in my opinion it has covered the space between RS2 and Ronin 2 Pro. For me it is very important because recently I had at least a few large projects where I had to use a really big setup and honestly I had a pretty hard choice which Ronin to use. On the RS2 I was able to make it all work but I had to make some modification and I also had a feeling that I'm starting to balance on the edge of good stabilization in relation to size and weight. On the other hand, the situation is totally different in case of the Ronin 2 Pro where I had a feeling that is too big for my needs. So that's why the RS3 Pro is the missing piece in my opinion because it's bigger than RS2 and at the same time still keeps all the benefits of a more portable gimbal than the R2 Pro. What's more, the larger size means that it's definitely easier to balance a huge professional set on it and I also have the impression that the entire carbon body is much more stiffer and more stable which should improve the performance. I've already tested this in many situations and I can honestly say that it's true. I have no idea if it is exactly 20% better stabilization but it is certainly much better. Fast and very dynamic movements, all the micro vibrations, other stuff like wind resistance, acceleration, dynamic turns and braking, it all looks much much better. I've already told you many times that the RS2 is for me the best and most versatile device in the universe because it can transform to any kind of equipment used on the set. So the RS3 Pro is definitely the next generation not only because of the better performance but also because of the more powerful accessories. 
The new LiDAR focus is a technology we already know from the Ronin 4D and it is a much more advanced version of the 3D focus which was the first autofocus system for manual lenses. And since it came out it is an almost integral part of most of my project because in some ways it was simply better than the best focus puller. Now, there are definitely more of these situations because the new LiDAR tracks not only point distance but also moving object and even object which you can select. You can use two modes, flex spot where you can select exactly which part of the frame to focus on and white mode which keeps the focus more central but will automatically recognize people. What is absolutely fantastic is the focus speed adjustment which is extremely important because previously the focus model reacts immediately and usually too quickly, even when there is some kind of small obstacle in the frame. But now, the focus changes are much nicer, smoother and very cinematic. Also, the new LiDAR doesn't need a Raven Eye anymore because it has a built-in wide-angle camera, so what you can see on the display is exactly what the LiDAR can see, so it doesn't matter what lens you have, the LiDAR sensor always sees the whole scene. Also, because the sensor has a wide-angle camera, active track works much better. The camera movements are very responsive, but at the same time very cinematic. Lens calibration is super easy and you can save different lens profiles in memory and switch between them very quickly. What's more, for the RS3 and 3 Pro you also get a completely redesigned focus motor which has two USB-C ports. Thanks to this I was able to set up one motor as a LiDAR autofocus and the second motor as a zoom control so I can now achieve more tricky shots. I think everyone can understand the incredible potential of this new device and a whole new way to take shots for which you previously always needed a focus puller and sometimes even with him it was crazy difficult. I mean no offense because there are still many shots in which you still need a focus puller so don't be surprised that DJI also gives you a tool which will make it much easier. I remember how excited I was when the Raven Eye came out and I was fascinated not only by the video transmission but also by the gimbal control support. The same kind of reaction and surprise I had when the Ronin 4D was released and I thought how great it would be to have something like that in my gimbal. So here it is, DJI O3 Pro video transmission technology for all cameras. Range up to 6km, ultra low latency, SDI and HDMI port, auto channel switching, integrated hybrid monitor, gimbal and focus control and advanced control mode. You can power it in a few different ways, directly from the gimbal but also from the several types of batteries. It has an HDMI and SDI port so you can use it with absolutely any camera. The receiver is a 7 inch hybrid monitor which is a total game changer. Except that it is a receiver from which you can continue to send a SDI or HDMI signal. It is also an external monitor which you can use directly with any camera and you can even record small quality footage directly to a micro SD card. Also, you can select from two connection modes. In broadcast mode you can use as many monitors as you want it. While in control mode you can only use two, but this is where the magic is going to happen. DJI transmitter is fully compatible with the Ronin RS2, RS3 Pro and R2 Pro. When you connect a DJI transmitter directly to the Ronin, it's no longer just a wireless video transmitter, but becomes the brain of the whole ecosystem. Then you get not only the wireless remote control over the gimbal itself, but also wireless follow focus and stop-stop recording. And if you are a Sony mirrorless camera user, you also have access to an advanced camera settings. Ronin can be operated in two ways. The first one is with the hand grips exactly the same as in Ronin 4D and the second way, which is my new personal favorite. Hybrid monitor comes with a brilliant control options, a gyroscope, which is actually pretty the same thing as a Force Pro. And let me tell you that over the past few years I have used every type of control on the Ronin and the combination of monitor and tripod is simply the best and most intuitive. In the menu you have a few settings that makes the camera movements incredibly cinematic and smooth. There are of course some shots where it is easier to do it with the joystick or DJI master wheels which it is also compatible with but for me this kind of motion control is really fantastic. So as you can see the DJI transmission combo is much more than just a camera video transmitter. It is the entire operating brain of a new system that offers so many solutions in such a small device. And I think any competition has been left very very far behind. Speaking about range. DJI OcuSync Pro technology transmission is absolutely amazing. 
rent up to 6 km is something absolutely from the future. Of course keep in mind that this kind of range is possible with perfect conditions and line of sight and I don't think everyone needs this kind of range, but such a strong signal makes the device perfect for a wide range of environments. After a few days of testing it in a many different situation, the most challenging in my opinion was the places where there was a lot of people and a lot of stage technology and also a big stadium where as you know all the walls are extremely massive. What's really amazing, I spent the whole day walking around almost the entire stadium and also outside and I never had a single problem with transmission. I was even in a kind of underground tunnel about 400 meters from the transmitter. With such phenomenal range, some of the limitations we had before are gone. For example, actually, always when making any kind of car shots, the camera operator always has to be somewhere close to the camera, usually in the controlling car because of the quite small range of the wireless transmitters. But now, with the DJI transmitter, not always, but in a many situations, the operator no longer has to sit physically in the vehicle or move behind it, and this gives us much more freedom to use and attach to any vehicle, including single-person ones. Something else that except crazy range makes this system outstanding is the fantastic stability of the connection. And this combination opens new horizons not only in the film industry but also in live TV. SDI output signal, ultra low latency and practically zero interference even in the case of large scale mass events makes this equipment top of the line and perfect solution for a wide range of live productions. For comparison, I usually use Vizlink transmission which is designed for broadcast cameras and it is a terrible expensive toy because besides video transmission it also gives me remote control over many different parameters of the camera. I made a few first tests and so far the DJI transmitter wins with a huge advantage in range and connection stability. From my experience on a big event, I know that the signal interference is mostly affected by the large number of smartphones in one place. Because the phones also use a frequency spectrum close to 2.4 and 5.8. So in the case of Vizlink, it is sometimes necessary to manually search for a better channel and sometimes even reduce the quality of transmission. So imagine how surprised I was when with 42,000 people in one building I had not a single bit of interference, not even the smallest one. The DJI receiver automatically searched for the best possible channels and even with thousands of people in such a small space it works perfectly. For me this is something unbelievable. However, with so many improvements it is not always possible to make them all perfect. Like the RS2, the new RS series gimbals has no power output for the camera. This is obviously not something that is absolutely necessary for all of us, but there are many users for which such a feature would be great. The easy solution for this is the tilt and ring grip in which you have a few pit-up connectors for which you can easily power a camera or even monitor. Another option is an additional base plate with power output. A great solution if you use the Ronin not only in the conventional way. Now, you can already buy such a best plate or you can modify your own if you have one. The only thing you need is some kind of connector and all you have to do is to steal the power from the inside of the plate. I think any sort of local electrical or electronic specialist can do it for you if you don't have the right tools. Another thing I feel is missing is the ability to use LiDAR focus and DJI transmitter at the same time. The reason is that the both devices use the same USB-C port. Maybe after some update this will change because it would be really nice to have access to such a brilliant option from Ronin 4D which is the focus histogram. But for now I also have a solution however far from perfection. Priority here is taken by DJI transmitter because as I mentioned it, it is the brain of the whole system. So more than autofocus I care about control. And here I connect it exactly as it should be. But then I connect the LiDAR sensor USB-C not to the bottom port which is already taken by the transmitter but to the focus motor USB-C and then autofocus works but in a limited way that is without the camera and basically its operation is similar to the old 3D focus that keeps the focus only on the central part of the frame. As I said it is not the perfect solution but I am sure it will help in some way. It's not a big question for which group of users and for which cameras each of these gimbals was designed, 
RS3 looks like a little brother or son of RS3 Pro and if I had to quickly describe Aronin RS3 I would say that is a smaller version of RS2 with better stabilization and stiffer arms. But what's important? The new mount and some new features make it no longer just a small tiny gimbal but has become one of the most advanced professional line of stabilizers that will be perfect for smaller cameras. But what about the RS3 Pro? Is it worth to upgrade in my opinion? Absolutely. Not only because since I bought the first Ronin I am a very loyal customer, but mainly because each new gimbal has something that gives me a new point of view on possibilities I have and on the effects that previously were also possible to achieve, but in a much more complicated way. Of course, there are many users for which RS2 and even the first S model is all they need, but as for me, I definitely need it. About the DJI transmitter, I honestly think that this is one of a kind equipment that does not need any kind of recommendation. This is where the performance is the best possible recommendation. I have no doubt that this transmitter will immediately become the leader in the market, not only because it has the best performance, but also because it is the only tool that gives you such a wide range of different possibilities. About the price range, I think it is really good. The RS3 Pro is not much more expensive than the RS2, while the transmission combo is worth much more in my opinion. And I guess there will be some people who will say it is a lot of money, but you have to realize that the Pro logo in the name is not a marketing trick, it's a sign of tool which as my good friend used to say can turn boys into a man. Take for example my story with Ronin R2 Pro. I remember that when it came out, it was three times more expensive than previous Ronin 1. But what you could do with it was beyond anything else. It's been almost three years since I got the Ronin R2 Pro and it really never stops to amaze me how good and professional the equipment is. In fact, it was expensive, but it made 10 times more money for me than it cost. So I think it was an excellent investment. I have exactly the same feeling here. This is a pro line. This equipment is not for collecting or buying for fun to put on the table and make you happy. This is equipment for work, for hard work, for making money, for doing the things you dream of, for performing your potential. You know, sometimes I wonder what else DJI will surprise us with, but at this point I'm just crazy fascinated with what we have now and I will definitely talk about it in the next episode.